Today I would like to talk to you about three things that your mom deserves. And uh, so the first thing that a mother of a child deserves is his or her obedience. And um, obedience is an important principle of God in the Bible. The Bible tells us there's uh, many lessons that we can and should take from our parents. For example, King Solomon wrote this to his son in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. He wrote this, Listen, my son, to your father's instruction, and do not forsake your mother's teaching. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. Solomon, the wisest king that was ever on the face of this earth. He uh, had a position of great authority, and we know the end of Solomon, right? I can bet you that with Solomon, he um, was a preacher of things like this, but somewhere along the way he lost his bearings somewhere along the way he forsook his mother's teaching and in the end we're told that his many wives led him astray and led him down a path and he's the wisest person in the world you know we can't we can't as as parents love our kids the way that we ought to love without God at the epicenter. And children, you can't obey your mom the way that you need to unless your heart is surrendered to Jesus. And the Bible tells us, and, and just because Solomon wandered away from what was right, okay, what he said is true. The wisdom of our parents can adorn us like a valuable piece of jewelry. And, and it makes a, makes a beautiful difference in our lives. The, the bottom line is that we ought to obey our mom because it pleases us the Lord. And Ephesians 6 one says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Colossians 3.20 puts it this way, Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. And unfortunately, we see many kids in today's world neglecting this very important principle. In fact, um, part of our discussion in our pastor's conference is talking about culture, cultural shifting. And in our present system, how children are being encouraged to think independently from their parents and to make their own decisions for themselves on how they should be able to live and behave. And parents are told by the forces that are trying to shape their children from the outside that they ought to let their children decide most things for themselves. Permissive parenting has become a huge reason why there are so many big problems in our society and the world that we're living in. It really is true. What's happening is tragic. Because pride in kids is often encouraged, while discipline and obedience to parents is viewed as being outdated, oppressive, and stifling to the child's development. But as believers... We understand from the teachings throughout the Bible, pride is a destroyer, isn't it? Pride is a destroyer. Wherever pride rears its ugly head, it is a destroyer. And out of love for God, parents and children are commanded to be in the world, but not of it. We're not of this world. When you become a child of God, kids, when you accept Jesus as your Savior, there's a change inside you. Ownership is exchanged. The God of this world no longer has claim on your spirit. 
the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, has claim on you. So, out of love for God, we're to be in the world but not of it. And we were going through James, but in James 4, 6, and 7, there's this universal truth that, um, that's spoken. And, and it's this, that God oppose, opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. And that doesn't just apply to the adult world. This applies to the, the children and youth world as well. And parents, we can't encourage prideful behavior in our kids. Because if we do, it's, there's not going to be a garland around their neck. There's going to be a heavy weight that drags them under. And we're going to lose them. So, we know what it's like in the last days, right? All you have to do is turn on the news. You know, I was, uh, we were talking statistics. And did you know this new generation coming up? This is a raw statistic. You can Google it if you want. But 40% of children that are coming up right now identify as LGBTQ2. That's what's happening. And we need to pray for our kids. We need to love them. There's so much confusion out there. But God has the answers in His Word, doesn't He? Amen? Like there's answers to to the things that people face out there in the world. And they're at the feet of Jesus. Second Timothy 3, 1 and 2 says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy. Folks, pride makes children think that, think that they should be in control. That's at the root of it. When you and I want to be in control and want, want to do things our way instead of what God teaches is the best way, at the center of that, at the upper center of that is pride. And, and, but here's a reality check regarding wisdom. <clears throat> Think about children for a minute. Regarding wisdom, children are relatively blind due to their lack of life experience. Yet you have society saying, oh yeah, the kids should be able to decide for themselves how they want to live, what they want to do, what they want to eat, what they want to wear, how they want to, wherever they want to. This is what's being encouraged. But think about it. There's no life experience. And without life experience, there's blindness due to that lack of life experience. Kids don't see themselves the way that mature people see them. They're naturally deceived about themselves. They want all the privileges of adulthood without the maturity thinking processes and adult discernment to guide them. And God knew this. And that's why He asked kids to obey their moms and their dads. By nature, as sinful beings, foolishness is bound up in the heart of every child because of Adam, because of the fall. And they want to exercise their independence from a very young age, don't they? <laughs> Being a four, uh, father of four children, I see this. You see it too if you're a parent. It's It's true. There's foolishness bound up in the heart of every child. But, but, but the truth is this, that correction, loving correction and discipline and guidance from our mothers can bring wisdom assisting us to make sound life decisions. And all of us as adults sit here today now, we come from different places, but there's lessons that tend to stick with us throughout our lives, right? Right? Maybe they're lessons that were obtained by listening. Maybe they were lessons that were obtained by doing what was wrong and having to face the consequences of that. But there's lessons. 
And, and even if we haven't had the best upbringing, there's good things that all of us have learned from our mothers that we can reflect on. Amen? Amen. And we should. We should take stock from time to time. Think about what mom has taught us. When we obeyed our moms, did we find protection in the process? Oh, yeah. I mean, if it wasn't for mom, I would have been in a whole lot worse a place, right? And you would have too, right? When we obey our mom, we find that it leads to a pathway of life. When we disobey, we find ourselves being unnecessarily hurt. As most of us here today are believers, including children, we are freed from the dominion of sin. If you've accepted Jesus as your Savior by grace, through faith, God puts, He takes away your sin and a new master is placed inside of you. The Holy Spirit comes and makes His residence within you. This is very good news. Because it, doesn't, it means that we don't have to carry this load on our own that we face in this world. God's given us a new heart that puts to death the rebel within. And I'm not saying that moms, that you're perfect. You know you're not. But I want you to call out on the Lord. You can call out on Jesus. And He can give you the strength to make the right decisions, to be able to train and teach your children in the right ways, in the ways that are, that are going to give them life. Ways that have been given to us by God through His precious Word. He can give you the power to be an overcomer. You are no longer a slave to sin. You're no longer a slave where you before you're saved, I mean, you, you march to that drum. But God's giving you a new heart. Yes, you can choose to walk in your own way, but you're not bound by that. You're not bound as a slave. Who's your new master? Jesus. You're born again. And don't let the devil condemn you and say that you're not. If you are truly a, a child of God and you have the Spirit of Christ in you, you are born again. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, we have a problem. We have a problem because maybe you've never surrendered. See, it's not just a prayer that we pray. When God asks us to come to Him, He come, asks us to come to Him in repentance. So if, if we're here today and there is no change in the way that we're carrying ourselves, we have to get real with God and say, God, what's going on inside here? Because you've asked me to turn away from the ways of the flesh, from the ways of the world. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's that we're, we believe, but our love for Christ has waxed cold. We've wandered. God is asking us to return to our first love. Moms, if you're going to be the mother that God wants you to be and to see those children grow in, 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 in the ways of the Lord, you can't do this on your own. Your heart has to be after God and in total love with Jesus. So, if this world, if our flesh has sidetracked us if the enemy has lied to us and we've swallowed some of his lies we need to push away from that table why because there there is a promise in the word of god he never leaves you or forsakes you he's not leaving you alone you draw near to god he'll draw near to you submit yourselves therefore unto god resist the devil and what will happen the scripture says that he will flee and that is a promise that is a promise, and that is true. It's been tried, it's been tested over the centuries, and it is true today as it was back when it was first written by the apostles, by, by Christ. All these, all these teachings that he's given to us through his servants that we have in the canon of Scripture are true today. So, 
today, if you hear his voice, humble yourselves before the mighty hand of God. And children, children, are you giving your mom the obedience that she deserves? No, she's not perfect. She's not always making the right choices. But she deserves your obedience. Why? Because God says that she deserves it. And we need to obey the Lord. If you're not a Christian today, and you're here, and you're a young person, come to the Lord. Open your heart to Him. Ask Him to be your Savior. Ask Him to be your Lord and to change your heart, to make your heart soft to God, to wash away your sins, and He will. If you're willing to come to Him and repent and recognize that it's only by His grace that you can be saved, He will save you. Are you giving your mom the obedience she deserves? This leads to my second point. Not only moms deserved our obedience as children, but moms deserve our respect and honor throughout the course of our lives. Ephesians chapter 6, 2 to 3 says that we are to give our moms honor. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. On the flip side, on the flip side, Solomon warned that there would be consequences for people who curse their parents. In Proverbs 20:20, 20, 20, it's written, "If someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness." Whew, that's a heavy one, isn't it? It's true. If we get into the habit of doing our own, doing things our own way. Without regard for wisdom experience, moms bring wisdom and experience that we don't have because we don't have that life experience that they have. We will find ourselves in trouble in a, in a real hurry. There's no substitute for wisdom gained through experience. Moms, you've walked this earth for a time, and some of the moms here for a lot longer than others, but you gained a lot of experience. We would do well as people to glean from that and you know, some people got to learn the hard way. Well, no, they don't have to learn the hard way. You don't have to learn the hard way. You can listen and you can heed your parents' instructions. You don't have to learn the hard way. Yeah, I remember growing up, there was a song by DC Talk. Some people got to learn the hard way. I guess I'm the kind of guy that has to find out for myself. Some people have to learn the hard way, and I'm crying. Huh. Ignoring the words of wisdom leads to sorrow and heartache. And God's like, why take needless beatings? Greater is he that is in you. If you're a Christian young person here today or a child, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You don't have to listen to those voices out there. You don't have to. What? If you're a child of God, he's given you, he has not given you a spirit of fear and cowering, but power and love and soundness of mind. And what soundness of mind is? That turns us to wisdom. And where can we glean wisdom? From the Word of God, but also from our parents and their experience. Moms generally want what's best for their kids, whether they're children or adults. Fathers do too, but this is Mom's Day. In this, they will be sure to be giving us the very best advice that they can. And uh, if we follow their good advice, it's like a lamp that illuminates our paths. What do we see in the scriptures? What is a lamp that lights our way and lights our path? The Word of God, right? Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And if your mother has been um, teaching you the things of God, oh, you get a double blessing. Because she's taking those things that God has taught her practically and how she's lived out her life, and she's giving you those things like jewels that will, that will be like a, a beautiful thing that will 
will, will, will hold tight to you. It will beautify. It'll, it'll make your life better. We, build, we do well to heed mom's advice. Of course, that being said, okay, because we live in a fallen world, sometimes mums are not godly. Sometimes they're not perfect. We must weigh all the advice from our parents to see if it lines up with God's word. And if it does, we respect, we honor it. But there's some advice that we're given by parents that may not be um, in line with God's word. And, and those kind of pieces of advice we need to set aside. So everything, kids, um, teens, everything that you're told, you always weigh that with God's word, and that's good for all of us, right? Maybe as adults, our moms or dads give us advice, and maybe it's not very good advice. Well, weigh it with God's word. And sometimes we have to chew on the meat and spit out the bones, right? But this is, this is not an option. The fifth commandment of the Ten Commandments, what is it? Honor your father and your mother. Right? This is not an option. If we are to serve the Lord and obey Him, we are to honor our mom and dad. Even if our mom and dad have merely messed things up, we are to honor them. We might not, have, we might not take all of their advice, because some of it might not be good, but we still need to honor them. Moms have to deal with instructing, disciplining children who say no, right? How does it feel, mom, when your child goes, no? <laughs> How does that feel? It's not easy. How about if they purposely pour out their milk on the carpet and look at you? Or <laughs> how many kids have flushed toys down the toilet? Huh? Well, I think every single one of mine tried it at least once. <laughs> Maybe they decide the fish inside the fish tank need a bubble bath. You come home and they're all floating on the surface, right? What a mess. Ah. Maybe she had to deal with a son who carved up his sister's doll with a pocket knife. Yeah, it was me. <laughs> Took years for them to figure that out. They thought it was the dog. I confessed. I, I said, yep, I confessed. Well, this is, this is what I did. Uh. Okay. For many cultures in the world, respect for one's parents is rightfully the highest duty in civil life. And honoring parents is, we know, I just said it, is the fifth of Ten Commandments. And not only are we commanded to honor our father and our mother so that our days may be long in the land that God is giving us, but um, we give them honor and respect indirectly in a way that honors them and uh, honors our family name. Proverbs 10, 1 states, A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son brings grief to his mother. Proverbs 17, 25 states, A foolish son brings grief to his father and bitterness to the mother who bore, them, bore him. And mothers concern themselves enough for their children. We should not give them unnecessary grief by dishonoring them in a way, in the way that we live. But we should harvest goodness from the wisdom they give us. And you know, it is not a bad motivation to do what is right because you love your mom and you don't want to cause hurt. That's not a bad motivation, right? Because the, t the most important commands are, are twofold, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself, who is closer to you as a neighbor than your own mother. Yeah, it's pleasing to God. We don't want to hurt them needlessly. It's a difficult task, isn't it? And we talked about this already. It's difficult. But God has not left us alone. He's not left you alone. Maybe you've got a temper that needs to be dealt with. 
Maybe you've got unforgiveness in your heart that needs to be laid down. Do it. Why? Because God, God asks you to. And he wants, he, this isn't legalism. He wants you to look at him and love the Lord your God with all your heart. God, I want, I want what you want. God, as a believer in you, I don't want what my flesh wants anymore. I relinquish that control to you. I turn from that, Lord, and I ask you, Lord, be my guide. Show me the truth. Lead me into righteousness and wisdom. Heart after God. God does not turn hearts away that are contrite. He won't turn you away. He'll give you the heart that He desires you to have. But you've got to humble yourself. God's calling you. Can you do that on your own strength? Not a chance. The heart is desperately wicked, isn't it? And prone to wander from God. That's why we need the grace of God. And when we understand the grace of God, we understand the love of God. And if we understand the love of God, then obedience and respect and honor follows. And that becomes this garland that graces our neck. Many of us over the years have messed up on this point, haven't we? We messed it up. <laughs> if you've failed, join the club. In our flesh, there's nothing good. Our flesh is corrupt. But God has given you His Spirit. He's taken His robe of righteousness and He's placed it over your shoulders. This is so good. You don't have to live in that realm of disobedience any longer. You can live at peace with God in obedience to God. Why? Because He's given you His Spirit. He saved you not to leave you to face life alone. He saved you to give you at one with Him. At one atonement. God made atonement happen. He justified you, made you just as if you never sinned. His sanctification is continually changing us if we yielded to become more like Jesus every day. You're not alone. He is with you. If you recognize a deficiency in yourself, good. Because as soon as we start to think we can do it on our own, that's when we fall. That's called pride. We all know what pride comes before a fall, right? When we try to make things on our own and do things on our own terms, we put ourselves at enmity with the Spirit of God. God calls us as believers to keep in step with the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the desires of the sinful nature. And it's only when our hearts are contrite that we can overcome. He gives us the strength we need to be obedient. Sometimes we try it all on our own first and we fail. Why isn't this working for me? Well, it's because the cart's before the horse. We need Jesus as, our, as the rider on our horse, horse and cart, you might say. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, it says in John chapter 1, 6-9, Yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. Isn't that cool? If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. God's into close relationship. He wants you to be close to your mom, kids. God wants you to be close to your mom. Mom and Dad. He wants you to be close. And if you're, if you're walking in the light as He is in the light, there's fellowship with one another. You sense the, the, the fellowship in our assembly? Well, that's because of the light of God. 
is shining in the hearts of his people. And that's beautiful because the blood of Jesus has purified us. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Confession helps restore the closeness of our vertical relationship with God. You know what? If you and your mom are at odds, it's time to lower your pride. It's time to go to her and ask her to forgive you. It's time to say, you know what, mom? I know that I'm not perfect here. And I'm not talking about anything to do with you, but for me, I just need to say, I'm sorry. Would you please forgive me? I know I've done this wrong, but I, I love you. Today might be the day. Maybe you haven't talked to your mom in years because you got this thing. It's time to let go, and it's time to give her a phone call. And I would suggest that after the church service and the barbecue today would be a great time for you to pick up that phone and to call your mom. And if you need to confess your part in a broken relationship with her, then you do that. Confession helps us in our vertical relationship with God and helps us on the horizontal plane as well in our relationships with other people, including our moms. So, our mom deserves obedience, respect, honor, and she deserves, thirdly, our love. There's a story in the Old Testament in the book of 1 Kings where the prophet Elijah was choosing a man to replace him in his ministry. Elijah saw Elisha plowing his fields with oxen, so he came up to him and he recognized the call of God on his life, so he threw his cloak over Elisha, and Elijah knew what that meant. He knew what it meant. He knew that he'd been chosen to follow Elijah and to learn from him, to follow God. He knew that he would have a career change, taking him far from his home and his former life, and instead of leaving it abruptly, we read that Elijah demonstrated appropriate affection towards his parents. So in 1 Kings 19, 19 and 28, we read, So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his auction, oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my mother, my father and my mother goodbye, he said, and then I'll come with you. And that's exactly what he did. Elijah's like, yep, go. So he did. Practical display of love from Elijah towards his parents. When we're making changes in our life, it's not a bad thing, is it? To go up to mom, let her know what you're up to. Make sure she knows that you love her. It's a righteous thing to do. Proverbs 23, 24, the father of a righteous child has great joy. A man whose father is, who, who fathers a wise son rejoices in him. May your father and mother rejoice. May she who gave you birth be joyful. <laughs> How we treat mom it's either going to bring her sorrow or it's going to bring her joy. And righteousness and character, my friends, is more important than any other achievement. You can be the richest person, the most powerful person, but if you don't have righteousness, you've got nothing. Righteousness comes from a relationship with God and being obedient to the Lord. Nothing fills a mom's heart with joy more and to see good character development in our children. We love mom when we show good character. You want to show your mom good love? Don't, don't, just, don't just say, I love you. Show her that you love her with your actions. Actions speak so much louder than words, don't they? Words are good too. <laughs> but they need to be together. Actions combined with our words. Love's defined by the Bible, right? In 1 Corinthians 13, 
Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. What more can we say? Love your mom. Love your mom in this way. Yeah, maybe you're not feeling so warm and fuzzy towards mom right now. Well, guess what? You need, as a believer in Christ, you need to let that go. Let God stir you and teach you and obey this principle. So today is Mom's Day. Moms, we honor you for all that you are, for all that you've done for us over the years. And I hope that you get some flowers in the card. But more than that, I hope that you have the gift of obedience with kids and that you're honored and respected throughout your life. And today, we give you, as mothers, unconditional love and say thank you. We thank you that you are here today and that you honor the Lord. And, um, well, that's really what I wanted to say today. So for you ladies out there, um, Horse Lake Nursery has generously donated some potted plants. So make sure you take one with you before you go home today. Just remember, you are loved, and we care very much for you guys. May you have a wonderful Mom's Day. May God bless and keep you. Amen. Would you bow with me in prayer? Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for what you're doing in the hearts of the people here this morning. And God, maybe some of us need to let go of things. Maybe some of us need to let go of feelings that we have and embrace our mom with the love and honor that she deserves. And God, if we're kids, God, we... We are commanded to be obedient and forgive us when we're not, Lord. Our hearts need you, Jesus, to help us to walk. So today, God, as we go to our barbecue, may you bless our barbecue. And uh, we thank you for all that you are, Jesus. And all that you are is supportive of our mums as they, as they submit to you, Lord. And we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen.